Hi everyone, so let's talk about the Frutas IPO. Will it perform similar to KPPI or will it perform similar to either Axelum or All Home? What's the de details? What's the nitty gritty of the stock? The whole goal and intent of this video is to give you the right details so you can pick whether you will buy the stock or not. Check this video out. Hi everyone, this is Marvin Germo. If you're new to this channel, subscribe, smash that bell so you get updated every time I create new content about the stock market. I create as much as possible daily videos with one goal in mind, to help you, to educate you, so you can trade the markets with confidence. So hey guys, so I'm back again in, in Manila. It's nice to be back after a couple of days moving in and out from Qatar, Malaysia, CDO. But over the next few days, I'm still gonna travel. I'm still gonna go to Cebu, Singapore, Davao, and other cities as well. So the links are down below for those who want to join us for our events. But for this video, I want to talk about Frutas. I want to talk about where's the stock headed. I want to talk about is the company in essence good? Is it growing? Is it something that from an IPO perspective, is it something that you should buy into? Is it something that you should put your hard-earned money into? Please remember, we did reviews for KPPI, we did reviews for Axelum, and we did reviews for All Home. As you notice, no one can predict how stocks will normally move on a day-to-day -day basis. No one can predict how will they perform on a day-to-day -day basis as well. But there's a couple of things that I do know. Number one, I do know the smaller the IPO, the bigger the chance that it could possibly move up because there's just a few shares moving around. The larger the IPO naman, the harder it is for the stock to move up because there are more shares moving around. So you can use that as a rule of thumb as well. So this IPO is relatively small. It will just be around 1.2 billion pesos. I'll give you more details throughout the video on, on the IPO and the money that will be raised. But you can put this under the perspective that it's not as big as the other IPOs that have come out. It's not as big as Axelum. It's not also as big as All Home. But I do hope that you get insights from this that will push you and will give you the right uh, numbers, will give you the right conviction whether you should come in or not. Because at the end of the day, it's not about getting the right choice or the wrong choice. It's about getting the one that you know and that you came in because you, you came in with the right conviction on it. Because please remember this, it has to be you who should decide whether you should buy or you should invest or you should stay away from the stock in general. So enjoy this video. Hey guys, so it's that time of the month again where we tackle the next IPO that's coming out. Please remember that over the past few weeks, we've talked about Kepwell, Axelum, and also All Home. Just a quick update also on IPOs that are lined up. Please remember that the MPP, MPI hospital unit won't push through anymore because the money that they would need is already, uh, it will, they'll source it from private investors. It will be sourced through f private funding. The narrative though between that is that uh, I'm, I posted a video that they might be thinking that uh, because of what's happening in in the world stage what's happening in global markets uh, because there's not a lot of people willing to buy it at a higher price you can't expect stocks to move up and also as evidenced by what happened to Axelum and All Home you saw those IPOs not really push higher that being said we are left with after Axelum, Kepwalt and All Home were left with Calcom, Frutas and the Ace Medical Center in Tacloban City as the companies that we've seen so far that have been disclosed that will still do an IPO this year. So now we're gonna tackle Frutas and as you all know I'm a big fan of consumption companies as you all know I'm a big fan of uh, where Filipinos normally spend their money because at the end of the day I really believe that we are still a consumption driven economy that as long as Filipinos spend as long as Filipinos spend massively uh, we will do good the economy will thrive and the economy will do okay so what about Frutas? The whole goal of this is to give you data whether you should buy Frutas or not based on what's happening on the IPO so at any point within the video or even at this point right now if you think you like Frutas already even before I discuss uh, details about the company comment Frutas if you're buying the stock at the IPO comment below so that I don't know I just want to know I want to get a sense of those uh, watching the videos if you are uh, favoring buying this stock or not so that being said what is what is Frutas? 
Frutas is a whole, Frutas is basically a holding company. Uh, please remember that every every time people think about Frutas, they always think about the fruit shake brand that you see in the mall. But please remember this: Frutas is not just that anymore. Uh, they've been acquiring other companies uh, throughout its lifespan, and they've been also building their own brands as well. So Frutas is you can you can peg it as a smaller scale type of Jollibee, where Jollibee has their own brand. They've been starting their own brands and their own formula but they've also been acquiring as well and that's what Frutas has been doing uh, they're not just a beverage cost operator because they also have uh, food parks as well in Quezon City I think I was able to see the one in Maginhawa just a few uh, more than a year ago so currently the brand is around 24 active brands throughout its portfolio so again this is a company that has a variety of brands so think about also Max, which has several brands across it. Think about Jollibee, that has several brands across it as well. But again, think about Frutas as a smaller scale version because instead of uh, quick service restaurants, instead of casual dining chains, Frutas basically is predominantly uh, making its money from kiosks. So, who is the owner of Frutas? Uh, his name is Lester Yu. He started the company a couple of years back with the signature brand Frutas. The thing about that is after he started the company, the total number of stores that we have right now is 949 stores. And what's interesting about that, and if you've been a long fan of this uh, YouTube vlog series that I've been doing, I like companies where they have a variety of stores and they have a large number of stores and they also franchise their stores but I've been hammering this to people that I like companies who have more company owned stores than the ones that are franchised at least also when they're starting out it's I don't like to see companies that are new or this are starting out that have 80% uh, of their stores franchised and only 20% that's uh, company owned so this is, this is we're off to a good start 949 stores 18% are only franchised it means that the company is actually making money from uh, the sales of the stores that they have that the company is actually making money based on them having really good products that, that's being sold and consumed uh, by by Filipinos by their customers and that also means that it's, it's not it's not just a one-hit wonder it also means that they have clients customers who are coming back you have to remember the name the name of the game for this is if you're talking about food number one it's all about location it means most likely that they are positioning their stalls if you've been if you if you've been going through malls they're mostly in um, mall type scenarios and you can also see them close to schools as well because the target market for this is it's not essentially your uh, uh, the the price points are not so high so even students can afford uh, buying this as well so uh, when it comes to mind when when you talk about kiosks and food stalls uh, potato corner for me is one of the larger brands as well uh, if you would want to make a comparison the potato corner brand is around 1100 plus 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 stores but uh, this is not just based in the Philippines this is also stores that they have uh, outside the country as well as you all know potato corner is actually uh, positioning themselves to be a global brand and I'm actually waiting for this to IPO I don't know if they'll IPO or they'll do it soon but if they do this is something that you have to watch out for uh, because at the end of the day it's all about brands IPOs are all about uh, companies are all about brands people consumers go toward brands that they know consumers go also to brands that they know in locations that are easy for them to go and what will make them come back is that there's value provided so we're off to a good start so for those who don't know uh the brands under the Fru Frutas Holdings Incorporated. These are the brands. So, uh, top of my mind, what I norm, what I've seen so far in the malls are Frutas, of course, uh, Buko ni Frutas. Then Jamaican, uh, Jamaican Patty, the original Jamaican Patty. Please remember though that this original Jamaican Patty was not something that they uh, bought. It was not something that they created from scratch. They just acquired this company to be part of their, uh, to be part of their brand. So. Uh, they got this via acquisition similar to Jollibee acquiring Chow King, similar to Jollibee acquiring Mang Inasal. Uh, what I've also seen is the Mango Farm. I've seen Juice Avenue. I've seen Black Pearl. I believe from all of the stores that they have now, Black Pearl has one of the largest uh, has a, one of the largest footprint. I've seen a lot of Black Pearls spread across uh, the different malls that I've seen as well. And uh, please, please, please know this also that the technique is also understanding Filipino culture, understanding what's 
uh, what's popular and what's happening right now and the thing about that is uh, milk tea uh, anything related to sagu is what's uh, normally uh, I don't know Filipinos like cool drinks Filipinos like uh, drinks that are filled with much sugar as well so there so next let's look at the IPO price so the IPO price will be 1.99 pesos per share please remember this no people have a misconception oh it's lower actually almost five uh all almost above 10 uh, mura to. please remember it's not because if the stock price is low it means that the stock is cheap you have to uh look at it from a valuations perspective for those who attended their stock smart sessions try to look at 1.99 then try to compute the eps uh, of the stock for for you to have uh, some sort of valuation perspective whether the stock is cheap or expensive and then you can uh, somehow compare it to the other consumer companies that are connected or at least listed in the PSE so you have a semblance if it's cheap or not so the total money to be raised from all of this is 1.2 billion pesos uh, as what I've mentioned at the top of the video 1.99 pesos per share multiplied by the number of shares that they will sell uh, the total money that they will raise is 1.2 billion pesos and as what I mentioned compared to the previous IPOs uh, Axelum and all hope this is relatively smaller but this is also relatively bigger than KPPI KPPI was only 300 million pesos so i hope you're learning comment i'm learning so far and comment i'm learning as if at this point in time you are currently learning from what we're talking about as well and just a quick plug no i just finished my sessions in uae i just finished my sessions in qatar uh the last four events that we will have for the year is in cebu this october 26 and 27 where we will just focus on technical analysis i'll put the link below under this description or comment cebu if you want to attend the cebu session then i will have stock smart singapore this one will be fundamentals and technical analysis evening sessions for weeknights no so for those who have work you can still attend because everything will be after work then on weekends we will have the technical technical analysis sessions come in Singapore if you'd like to attend the link is also in the description then investment conference Davao 2019 will be November 30 with the largest and biggest names in personal finance and investing it will be in SMX Lanang in Davao City the link will also be below comment icon Davao if you'd like to attend and lastly Stock Smarts Manila November 23 November 4 24 December 7 8 and this is wrong not 15 but December 14 uh, details for the event will also be in the link below or just comment Stock Smarts Manila if you want to attend similar to Singapore this is fundamentals and technicals but we are ending the session with the top and top 10 stocks for 2020 where I, I invite different speakers to share their own thoughts on investing next so out of the 1.2 billion that will be raised uh, you have 533.7 million shares as primary shares that will be sold then if there's a larger demand there's a larger uptake on it they will be selling an extra 6.83 million shares as over allotment so the narrative no this is a, since it's a smaller ipo and if there's a lot of interest on this uh it might be faster if na maubusto than uh, the other ones that were la relatively larger especially if the mpi hospital unit got ipo that would have been something very 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 big anyways IPO proceeds. This is what I keep hammering to people. You need to know where the money is going. And looking at it so far, you know, basing it on the breakdown, it looks good. It looks much better than the other companies like uh, in the past, like Semex, where majority of the IPO proceeds went to debt repayment. Now let's break it down. Uh, 586 million will go to store network expansion. 50 million will go to commissar expansion. 50 million will be for the expansion of their food park. 150 million will be stashed for them to acquire other brands or other companies and only 150 million will be used for debt repayment which is good no you don't want a company who will put majority of the IPO proceeds just to pay off debt now let's continue on this just to break everything down Store network expansion 59.4%, commissary expansion 5.1%, expansion of food park 5.1%, acquisition 15.2%. So effectively, around 84.8% will go to expansion and only 15.2% of the IPO will go to debt repayment. So quite acceptable. Uh, it would have been better similar to Golden Haven, full out expansion, but I'll accept 15% uh, debt repayment than other companies that had 50 60 70 80 percent of the proceeds of the ipo going to debt repayment also speaking of debt repayment just to show you the breakdown of the debt uh this is how it looks like 
majority of the debt basically are just loans to banks and they use the proceeds of the loan for working capital so china bank 28 million uh, Philippine Bank of Communications 2 billion, Union Bank 77 million, East West Bank 9 million, RCBC 24 million, China Bank 2 loans of 6.5 and 3.5 million pesos each. Uh, the interest rates are there as well. So, who's buying the shares? Similar to uh, the previous videos. Uh, the allocation is almost the same 70% will go to institutional investors 20% will go to trading participants and 10% goes to local small investors please remember this uh, people say that uh, local investors always get the bunt of everything but please remember they're not really uh, the IPO will proceed because there's a lot of institutional investors and the large amount of money that gets raised is because of institutions buying the stock. So, important dates that you need to know also is the offering period will be November 18 to November 22 and the listing will be November 29. So, it will be IPO November 29. But please make sure if you're interested in this uh, to, to lodge your orders during the offer period as well. Now, let's talk more about the company. Please remember, it's all important. It's so important that you need to know what you're buying. So, Frutas, uh, the growth of the company, this is the number of stores that they have. As what I've mentioned at the, at the start, they have 949 stores. But uh, 2016, they had 414. 2017, they dub almost doubled it to... Uh, 2017, they almost doubled it to 819 stores. Then, they still grew 2018, but they started to slow down a bit. So, uh, 2018, they had 9 130 stores then the first half of 2019 with 949 stores so i i'll try to make another video about this uh I, let's try to analyze what caused the slowdown from 2017 to 2018 and 2018 to the first half of 2019 or i want to also talk about what caused the sudden boom from 2016 to 2017 but just to peg it no uh I, I if 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 i could see it properly one of the reasons probably is because they started to acquire more that's why you saw boom a sudden uh, movement of their store growth and as, at, as what I mentioned also at the start, 18% of the companies are are only franchised. The large chunk of the of the stores that they have are company owned, which is very, 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 very good. So 774 stores are company owned, 107 are franchised. Now let's look at the numbers. Let's look at the sales. Top line revenue: 2015, 310 million pesos. 2016, 500 million. 2017, 1.1 billion. 2018, 1.5 billion. For the first half of the year. 29, 2019, 941 million pesos. So, if they move in the same progression as uh, as the first half of the year, which I don't think they'll do, which I think they'll surpass, because you all know the last half of the year Filipinos spend massively more. They will get, they will already exceed the 2018 sales. So they'll probably hit 1.9 to around 2 billion pesos uh, for 2019. Now, net income. This is, this is interesting, no? 2015, only 13 million, then a jump to 81.9 million in 2016, then 2017, they had 172.9 million, 2018, it dropped to 100.3 million, first half of 2019, 51.97 million pesos. I'll drill down the numbers further and I'll, I'll create another video on what causes this, uh, what did they spend more on 2018 that caused their uh, income to the drop. Please note when I mentioned the sales, the sales was up, they were actually up 4 billion pesos. 400 million pesos more for 2018 so most likely proceeds of what they what they sold they will use as part of expenses for the company anyways let's look at roe so this is more for people who attended their stock smart sessions uh, these are the ratios that we uh, would normally discuss for those who attended the start stock smart sessions where i'm going to talk about roe current ratio and debt equity ratio please check your notes so you remember but 2015 is 26.3 2016 67 2017 67 2019 29 2018 29 percent in the first half of 2019 is 26.5 percent if you look at our uh the standard that we've placed for stock smarts uh this is quite good this is quite high the roe is something that's very 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 good for the company current ratio all very good as well all above 100 percent from 2015 to 2019 for those who attended the stock smart sessions please do remember what this is and how important a good current ratio for the company is but essentially they have enough assets to protect them to pay off all of their liabilities next debt to equity ratio this is one red flag though that i'd like to point to a lot of people the company looks overly leveraged uh 2015 16 17 18 19 uh, up to 2019 they have they have had with the exception of 2016 
majority they have uh, a lot of debt as compared to the equity that they have and also for the first half of the year 161 percent debt to equity ratio so i want to compute also and if i have the time to make more videos on this i'll try to make a video where how low will the debt to equity ratio will be uh, after they've paid off the debts after the ipo uh, after the ipo please remember as what i've mentioned earlier 50 percent of the ipo will be used to pay off debts so essentially the debts will drop as well so essentially this uh, ratio also should also get lower as well next dividends uh dividends they're gonna at least they're gonna give dividends so they're giving around 30 percent of the net income from the preceding year so uh 30 percent of whatever net income they would have so say for 2019 they would give it as dividends for 2020 again uh, you want a company that gives dividends because it shows you that they're not just earning but they have excess earnings that they can give away to investors so there so what what do you guys think do you like the company comment frutas if you like the company comment uh ceiling if you think it's gonna go up on the first day comment floor if you think it's gonna go down as well post also your comments below if you have any other questions about frutas so i get to make other videos on this we still have a month for you to be able to decide on uh whether you should come in or not if you're for the stock so i hope you guys like the video comment below if you like the stock comment below if you like frutas comment frutas if you think you will buy it on ipo date comment ceiling if you think it's gonna go up comment floor if you think it's gonna go down on its ipo date as well and i hope you enjoyed this i'm gonna make more videos on frutas as we continue to push towards the listing and also the offer period as well but at the end of the day please I'm here to give you as much data as possible so that you, you get educated and you get to do the right thing based on your own risk, based on your own timeline, that you get to ignore the noise and you come in with your own firm conviction for the stock. So this is Marvin Germo. I hope this video helps you trade well, trade strong, trade smart. See you all again soon, guys, and God bless you all.